Hello and welcome to Bacteria. My learning goals for Bacteria include, you'll understand the differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. You'll appreciate how microbes take up substances from their environment. You'll be familiar with components of bacterial cells. You'll have an overview of the metabolic capabilities of bacterial cells and perhaps most importantly, you'll have a newfound appreciation for all that bacteria can do. Let's start with a little review of what we know about bacteria. Here's an electron micrograph of a common bacterium from your intestine, E. coli. These are rod-shaped cells, and they're magnified about 100,000 times. Bacteria in contrast to the cells that make us up, eukaryotic cells, bacteria have no nuclei and no membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria or chloroplasts. They form spheres, rods, and spirals, so they look differently under the microscope. And remember, they're found everywhere on Earth, not just in you and on you, but on every animal that exists in the oceans, the soils, and even the skies. And remember, the number of bacteria on Earth is an impressive number, five times 10 to the 30th. They now number every living thing on the planet. So let's take a look in more detail now at the structure of bacteria. In the inside of every bacterial cell is the cytosol, which is a fluid phase medium that contains a lot of the activity of the bacteria. The nucleic acid, the DNA of a bacteria, is present in a structure called the nucleoid. The cytoplasm of bacteria also contains ribosomes. These are the places where protein synthesis occurs. And many bacteria have plasmids. These are small pieces of DNA. They're often circular that are apart from the main chromosome of the bacteria. Surrounding this cytosol is what we call a cell membrane. On top of the cell membrane, there's typically a cell wall, another structure. And many bacteria have on the very outside what we call a capsule. On the very external part of the bacteria are some structures that help movement. Uh, one is called the fimbriae or pili, and the other is the flagellum. So that's an overview of the bacterial cell and the various components. Let's take a look at some of these in some detail. First, let's look at the cell membrane. This is a membrane that looks very much like the membrane that you or I may have on our cells, a eukaryotic cell membrane. It's made up of phospholipids. It's a phospholipid bilayer. It has many proteins embedded in it, and it functions by allowing the uptake of substrates, molecules that the bacterium needs, by specific transport proteins. Now, this is a very fragile membrane because bacteria are typically exposed to either cellular fluids or to the environment. The cell membrane has to have more protection. It can't just exist on its own. And so it has to be stabilized against detergents, osmotic pressure, and so forth. There are two solutions that we recognize to this problem of protecting the cell membrane of bacteria. And they include gram-positive and gram-negative. These are two ways of constructing the outside of the bacteria that are named after a Dutch microbiologist. His name was Graham. And he devised a stain to distinguish these two kinds of bacteria. So we have gram-positive bacteria we have the cell membrane on the very inside of the bacterium surrounding the cytosol. And then on top of that is a thick layer called the peptidoglycan, and this protects the cell. Between the peptidoglycan and the cell membrane is a space, and we call this the periplasmic space. So that's the gram-positive solution. There is a gram-negative solution where the cell membrane is covered with a thin layer of peptidoglycan, and then there is a second membrane on the outside, which is called the outer membrane. And so now we have two periplasmic spaces as opposed to the one in the gram-positive bacteria.
There are a few other solutions for protecting that cell membrane, but we won't be going into them in our discussion. Now, the Gram stain differentiates Gram-positive and Gram-negative bacteria according to color. Gram-positive bacteria stain purple, and these are the round bacteria that you can see in this image, whereas Gram-negative bacteria stain red, and you can see their rod-like bacteria in this image. A few examples of different kinds of bacteria based on the gram stain and the morphology will help you put these into context. So gram-positive cocci include Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. These are both causes of serious human infections. Gram-negative cocci include the Neisseria. These are the causative agents of gonorrhea, a sexually transmitted disease. Gram-positive rods include the Clostridia and the Carini bacteria. The Clostridia can cause many different diseases. One of them is tetanus, and the Carini bacteria uh, can also cause diphtheria. And finally, gram-negative rods include E. coli, a common inhabitant of our gut, and Salmonella. Both of these bacteria can cause gastrointestinal illness in humans. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.